Okay, everybody. We are live here with Ben Levin. Yeah. 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 Hello. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Good morning and evening and afternoon. Depends where you live. Wherever you are, grieving some salivations. <laughs> wow. Very, wow. very punny morning today. Yeah. I, I heard uh, someone said, I think it was like Ricky Gervais said, puns are, don't require any creativity. Puns are, don't, aren't an art. It's like, well, then why are some puns hilarious and some puns aren't? <laughs> if there's nothing creative about it, why are there some better than others? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just one other uh, subjective thing, uh, another subjective art. You just don't have a whole lot of like strictly pun comedians, do you? Yeah. Well, yeah. the few the few I've seen are just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? We are so excited to be here. Um, ben Levin, amazing songwriter, um, multi-instrumentalist. Um, <sighs> I'm super, super excited to have him here live today to help you guys with your songs. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff together. This is going to be super interactive. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, start this lovely slideshow that Ben and I put together together. Um, so we should be able to see that. No, <laughs> something like that. It's getting there. There it is. Okay, great. So this is Ben Levin helps you finish and or start your songs. Uh, if you guys don't know, know me, my name is Matt Ramsey, founder of RamseyVoice.com and Master Your Voice. Um, me and my partner Monica and our dog Lola live here in Austin, Texas. About 10 years ago, I started teaching private lessons. Then I created the Master Your Voice singing course three years ago. And uh, the cool thing about Master Your Voice is it's the only singing program out there that actually starts off with a personalized vocal assessment of uh, what I'm hearing. Uh, we could be maybe doing better in your voice and actually gives you uh, a plan to achieve that. And then, you know, just a humble brag, five-star rated vocal coach that's helped over a thousand students. Uh, those are in-person students, not digital, virtual students, not that they're any less real, but uh, in-person students uh, sing more in tune, expand their range and gain control. And Ben, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. I'm Ben Levin, and I live in Boston, and I don't have a dog, which is a painful <laughs> thing. I think about it every day. I'm starved for doggy not to eat but to love of course <laughs> and i only have one partner she's a human her name's jessica kind she's a wonderful artist and songwriter she inspires me all the time and we both are starved for dog it's very sad um i started making youtube videos in 2010 mostly fo focused on music theory or music theory concepts that I learned when I went to Berkeley College of Music. And I was just trying to get everything I learned at Berkeley onto the internet. And then eventually I kind of figured out how to do a, a pretty good job of teaching these concepts through video form because just of releasing lots and lots of videos that weren't great until they got better. Um, yeah, and so that's, now... That's not the way to do it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's that's a big part of like my songwriting philosophy is very similar to my YouTube philosophy. And so, yeah, like last year, that kind of culminated in a way into releasing my Getting Songs Done course, which is with a live band. And we're focused on not just writing the music, but then play. I get to demonstrate playing the concepts uh, with a band. And these people, they've been my friends for so long. And I... Uh, yeah, I'm just pumped about it, and uh, my students are indeed getting songs done, and they're enjoying the process too. So that's like that's like a, the most uh, what a what a cool advertising thing for me to tell you that this the course that I'm talking about that I made works. What a surprise that I say that. Wait, you're <laughs> telling me that people are actually enjoying writing songs? Yep, they ben, actually do. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I know it. Uh, well, it is often a um, process that makes you face parts of yourself that uh, maybe you don't like, like certain insecurities about, well, how you put yourself into a box saying maybe, well, I'm not a songwriter, or I'm not a singer, or I'm not a this, or I'm not a that, or, ugh, really? Are you going to write it like that? Or like, ooh, you sound blah, blah, blah. There's just all these voices that are like, no, getting in the way. And yeah. Uh, yeah, in order to enjoy it, you got to get rid of those things. 
And that's, that's just, you know, on a personal note and why I really wanted to have you on is like, I'm a very much kind of like in the box kind of songwriter. Like I feel like I have all of these rules for the songs that I write. And um, what I really like about your philosophy is there's like no right way to do it. There's no, you know, try to have as little judgment as possible and you'll get a lot more uh, songs written that way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, now we're going to be covering three awesome things today. Ben, uh, why don't you tell them what we're going to be covering? Sure. Yeah. So good strategies for writing a song from scratch, uh, which, you know, sometimes the blank canvas is the biggest, most intimidating thing for people. Other people have less of a trouble with the beginning. So we'll be focusing on starting, but also I'll be focusing on, uh, ways to develop music or like add lyrics to your songs. Um, and it's interesting because the, the process of starting music and starting lyrics really, they're not, they, they're not really different in terms of the, uh, mindset behind them, but they both share this, uh, important, or, or they both have very different processes, even though they share the same mindset. And then I'm going to help you, uh, define when a song is finished and therefore actually be able to get to that place where the song is finished. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, and just so everybody knows, this is going to be like a very, very interactive live stream. We're not here to just like blah information at you guys. We want you guys to actually start in applying some of this stuff. Um, so uh, we actually asked for some song submissions from some students before doing this live stream. So we'll actually be looking at some of those um, in the second part of today's um, workshop. But um, we're even gonna be doing a lot of interactive stuff as we go. So the only thing that you'll really, really need right now is just some sort of access to something to write on, write with, uh, pen and paper, uh, your phone with a little notepad or you know Google Doc, wh whatever is uh, comfortable for you but we're gonna be doing a lot of cool stuff and I am just so excited. So uh, Ben, shall we talk about um, this concept of writing reactively? Yeah, I love this. Uh, so we gotta talk about it. We got um, it. This is my, so so I, I'm lucky in that I, I do spend a lot of time writing music. Like it's become sort of like, it's it's become sort of the, the glue that kind of holds my day together. Uh, I see writing music as an activity, not necessarily always with a goal in mind, but it's just sort of like a process, sort of like going on a walk in the woods or like going on, you know, um, cooking or something. You know, I mean, obviously when we cook, we're going to eat at the end, but like people enjoy the process too. And writing reactively is very focused on trying to keep your mind in the moment as you write. And so there there are all of these different things that can cause resistance in, when you're writing. And I think most of them come down to approaching writing songs with this expectation that you should have an idea already. So we tend to almost fetishize our initial ideas like we say, that initial idea is so important. I had this spark. I had this idea. Or the opposite is we say, I don't have any ideas. I have nothing to say. Both of these mindsets are completely, like I think, uh, dangerous to enjoying the process and also don't necessarily result in uh, actually making songs a lot of the time. Because what happens is we come in with this precious idea and then we spend the rest of the time that we're writing being like how do i preserve this idea and like this isn't it and this isn't it and this isn't it but writing reactively is when you go in not necessarily with an idea or with a like a light sense of an idea and then you start doing things and you start reacting to the sounds and you start getting ideas rather than like being like Ideas come from me being like, no, ideas just kind of come from trying things. Uh, you start getting ideas and then you start going with the flow. Oh, this is working. This isn't working. And so regardless of like what your setup is, what 
gear you have, what your experience level is with different instruments or whatever. You're able to work with what you've got in the moment and and feel like the the energy of what's happening. So instead of being like, I need to write a piece for an orchestra, you can just be like, I am going to write with whatever I'm feeling today, whatever equipment's around me. Is If you're in the pandemic phase that we're all in, then okay, I'm going to probably be writing collaboratively in a different way than I would if I wasn't in the pandemic. And so it's not like we rely on life to be going any very, very specific way to be writing songs. Instead, whatever's going on, we're writing songs now. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I could just demonstrate that for a few seconds here. Like, yeah, please. I'll just start making a loop and let me know in the chat if you can't hear this. just like um here's a sound what happens next hopefully it came through all right and uh what what i'm doing there is like okay i realized my voice i just woke up recently so i got a little bit of vocal fry so i'm like let's lean into it so i'm like yeah i'm using more of those like fry sounds that hey, are just kind of there <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that how Axl Rose does it? Is it like uh, he, a falsetto fry he mix? Does, he does something similar to that. It's uh, It has a similar to that, Welcome to the jungle! Like, that's mm -hmm. got a little bit of fry to it. Um, that's more what we call like a pharyngeal sound, which is more of like when the vocal cords are kind of like in a falsetto configuration. Mm -hmm. But you're adding some of that kind of witchier kind of, <laughs> kind of sound to it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And what that's doing is that's bringing the chords together, um, which makes like that really strident, bright, brassy sound, but without necessarily being, ah! you know, uh -huh. just, uh, just getting yeah. up to it. So as, as you noted, the vocal fry is easier for you to do in the morning uh, mm -hmm. because that's just like a gentler configuration for your voice. So that, uh, ah! that's pretty easy. Yeah. To do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how I wake up. The first thing that happens is I'm like, uh, so, I mean, if I'm going to sit down and start jamming and like looking for things, it's going to be like, what is there? And it's sort of like, uh, okay, this second loop. I, so I made this loop first. <laughs> and that loop was good. But then the second loop I made wasn't really like nailing it. And like normally like you might be inclined to like stop and re-record the loop. It's like a little bit too. It's hard to follow that second loop. The first loop's better. So what do I do? I just like turn down loop two and I'm just like, well, okay, that one's a little too chaotic. We need something to hold this together. So we'd better get chords fast. And so <laughs> we got the chords and that kind of adds some sense to things. And then it's like, maybe I'll sing, maybe I'll play some of these buttons and of course I've like done this stuff before in terms of like I've beatboxed and then played a sound and then another sound I mean that's that's a pretty standard form but I don't know like what the groove's gonna be how it's gonna feel I don't have an idea of a melody I don't have an idea of chords even I just kind of get to go with my intuition and you know if you're practicing vocals and you're working on like low larynx singing or your falsetto or something like that and you're really curious about it like this is when you get to start writing with that stuff is just when it's like that's what i've been working on anyway and that's just what's coming out so it's much more i think with the grain writing where you're reacting to stuff than it is when you're um trying to preserve an idea all the way to the end so 
when you don't get fixated on an idea, you don't stop writing. And remember, remember, I, I, I'm, I'm really want to like bring the, this point home, which is that writing music, even though we're talking about finishing songs today, more important than finishing songs, I think, is just letting yourself do this because if it really is like a helpful experience. And if you're not having fun when you write, then it's not very helpful. Like then it kind of can ruin your day. <laughs> but um, you'll be able to have fun when you write if you're going with the grain like this, kind of letting yourself react to things. And then, yeah, if you're having fun with it, you'll do it more often and you'll get better at it. And you'll, then you'll be able to write faster. And before you know it, you'll actually be very, it'll be very hard to tell, am I having fun or am I being really productive? Because both things are happening now. I'm like writing a <laughs> bunch of songs and I'm having fun. And you, and you can like start to get really good at writing fast, which is actually, I think, helpful for preserving ideas in the first place. So it kind of comes full circle because when you do, if you do have an idea and you can get things out faster, then maybe actually that idea will turn out to have worked in the end. But still, you always have to be willing to abandon the idea for it to even have a chance. And that is just my perspective, though, because people like David Lynch would probably probably strongly disagree. But there are because David Lynch is very in, into the initial idea and doing yeah. everything to preserve that. But but if you consider like the parameters in David Lynch's work, you know, David Lynch will often be the director with a whole lot of limitations still in the room and then having to find like really creative ways to deal with those limitations. The production companies being like, we only have this much time, the actors um being you know he, he'll adapt parts for the actors to help bring bring the best performances out of them so even if you're like david lynch working really hard with one idea you still have to be adaptive and i i just say go all the way into the adaptive part and try to like make the whole thing like uh like like fungus growing it's just like it becomes like some beautiful form but maybe it starts out as like a rotten sandwich <laughs> Ooh. uh so three things real quick uh so someone in the chat asked what is low layering singing you you uh mentioned that earlier ben just in case anyone else is curious low layering singing your larynx is your voice box if you just draw a quick line uh, with your finger from your chin down to where your throat starts you'll feel this cartilage right here that's called the thyroid cartilage, which is uh, your larynx, it holds your vocal cords. And uh, what usually happens is people tend to follow whatever note they're singing with their larynx. They sing a high note, they raise their larynx up really high. If they sing really low notes, they tend to drop their larynx. Oh, but it just uh, so that everyone knows, um, ideally you want the larynx to kind of be in like kind of a resting place in the middle for good vocal technique. Now, if we take off the vocal technique hat for a second and we say, hey, I'm just, I wanna experiment here. Um, you can experiment with larynx position really easily. You can go the Axl Rose route where you raise your larynx a lot to create that really bright sound. Um, or um, I was just listening to uh, John Lennon's uh, Just Like Starting Over last night. And I think it's a really cool song because he drops his larynx at the very beginning. Well, it's been so long since we took the time. And then he goes uh, to a, a more natural resting laryngeal position after that. Um, so think about your larynx position as kind of like uh, colors that you can add. Uh, number two, um, I just wanted to kind of relate back to what you were saying, Ben, about like, you know, being fixated on this idea. And um, Ben, for the people that are watching this, how would you say that, you mentioned like you didn't like the second loop as much, so you turned it down a little bit. So it seems like there's kind of an editorial process or a judgment process that you have as you're going. How? What's the balance so that you're not being so judgmental that you're like getting fixated and you stop and and just going completely chaotic and everything goes and you end up with a mess? I think that's a very good question because um, that balance comes from being totally okay with the fact that something went wrong and uh so in other words like if all i'm doing is hearing this second loop isn't working out as great but i and i'm just hearing that and noticing it i'm gonna react to it musically i'm gonna say what could i add what what's gonna what sauce does this need if i'm 
being very idea centric, too much so, then when I hear that messed up loop, I might be like, oh crap, there's like a hundred people watching right now and they're going to think that I'm like some hack because I made a mistake doing music. Oh no, it's terrible. This isn't surgery. Like with surgery, something terrible happens if you make a mistake. In music, people don't really notice mistakes unless you make the performance about the mistake. So like if if you're doing a musical performance and you just kind of go with the flow, even if the audience is like, oh, forgot a lyric or oh, that was a weird note. They don't really care if you don't really care. Like I've seen this on stage a bunch of times. I'll break a string and I'll be like, ha ha, broke a string. And then the audience is like, ah, you broke a string. They don't <laughs> care that the next three like verses are like really out of tune there because I'm just fine with it. But if I break a string and I'm like, and I kind of freeze and I'm like, oh, oh, and then I'm like, hold on, band, the band, hold on. Yeah. Hold on a second. Just one second. And everyone stops and like, what? What happened? Let me just switch guitars. It's going to be so bad otherwise. Let me just, now you've just like stopped the whole flow. And so the balance comes from it. it I think like, this is, this is something you have to work on. Like, I'm not going to pretend that this is just something so easy. It takes like exercise. It takes like doing this as like a, a, a process regularly to be able to say this mistake is normal. Like I'm always going to make mistakes. Yeah. And therefore it's like you learn how to decorate the parts that you want to really pop out and sort of like massage and like smooth out the parts that don't really pop out. So like another solution to the second loop being bad is let's say put more reverb on it. Make it more of a background sound. Make it more washy. Or you could make another loop that's even worse. Now the whole thing, like check this out. Like I'm going to do loops that don't, that are like arrhythmic. Like they, like the first one seems like it's going to be sick. And then like things go awry. Let's do it. So it's like, <laughs> so we got a beat. Now let's say I bring this one in. And like, it's like kind of weird, kind of weird. But what about this? Like, uh, now we're getting a little bit. Uh, so then, my inclination might initially be like, "All oh, right, I screwed up that beat. Let me start over." But. What if instead I start keep adding more and more nasty layers and then I just do some like really dramatic leaning into it like how about let's go like this It's like I'm, Woo! I'm can we get a hand into, for Ben, everybody? Can we put? Can we get claps in the chat, please? <laughs> that was so cool, dude. Thank you. It just <laughs> becomes a texture, you know. It's like chaos. Okay, okay, all right. We've got chaos for sure. That is not. I'm not going to pretend it's not chaos, but chaos is a color. So we've got this chaos bu bubbling. It's like boiling water. What do you do with boiling water? Stick some fat pasta in there it's so it's so not bubbly right the the noodles are solid you stick them together you got spaghetti and it's like 
This is very solid. And then, especially if you sing like some chord tone, like very like here is a rock. So it solidifies, you know? yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're what I really liked with the the vocals that you did there was like with the dropout there, you added you know these kind of falsetto vocals, but it was very um, you know reinforcing that it's like it's okay, like there's there's something on the other side of this like kind yeah. of you know chaotic tone and then you add in this kind of like beautiful kind of like almost soul r&b falsetto vocal that just like kind of bathes you in this nice warm bath after yeah after going that's through a that. perfect way to describe it i i totally agree you're you're giving people a sense of safety as a listener totally absolutely ben yeah. i i'm just looking at the time i want to make sure we get yeah. to everything today Definitely. um shall we talk about lyrics yeah absolutely okay cool it, now this is something yeah. a lot of people get really stuck on how are we going to get them unstuck? Yeah, so it's a very similar thing mentally. It's just it's a, a slightly different process. But what we're trying to do is write reactively with our lyrics. And so what you want to do uh, is try to focus on just the physical aspects of putting words down more than the uh, mental at first. It's just like you got to warm up. People People often like... We accept that you have to warm up when you're like doing something physical, like lifting weights. Yeah. We accept that you have to warm up before you can even sing because you can physically feel like yourself becoming warmed up. We don't really necessarily intuitively realize that you have to warm up to have ideas. Like right. you have to warm up to be creative. Creativity is a muscle. Everybody, everybody is astoundingly creative. Just look at the way we use language, for instance. We know all these words, and yet we all have a very individualistic way of talking. People have personalities. Where do these personalities come from? They come from our perception of their use of common things. Like It's not like they're reinventing anything. It per your personality and my personality come from very subtle changes to basic stuff. We're both wearing the same kind of clothes, a t-shirt. Who knows what else is going on? But at least from here <laughs> up, we got a T-shirt. And we both have the same approach to hair, which is that we've cut it at some point. But our shirts and hair are very different in small ways that go go very far. So same with your words. So we got to spend two minutes. And I love the number two minutes because it's not that long. We spend two minutes writing as many words down as we can. Just let the words out. And the idea is you write as fast as you can. You write as many words as you can. And you don't want to worry about what those words really are. We're not even writing sentences necessarily. If you've got sentences coming out, go for it. If you've got rhymes coming out, great. Who cares? It's not, I'm not, that's not better. That's not worse. We're just going to write for two minutes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, I, it's really nice to do this with someone else. Yeah. It's a great friendship thing. So we, we can go back and forth. We'll each write for two minutes. And then I think it'd be great if I read your words back to you and you read your words back to me because then what will happen is we'll get to hear uh, our words and maybe we'll get some ideas from hearing them back instead of just like, well, here's what I wrote. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. So, so two things real quick, Ben. So I just sent you a blank doc in your email. Awesome. Um, so we can both be working on the same document. Um, and then we can look nice. at it. We can, we can actually have that on the screen so people can watch um, while we do it. This is super live. We have not, besides actually setting this up, we have not planned this. We have no idea what we're going to write about. Um, we have not sure. talked about it. And um, for you guys that are watching right now, I want to go ahead and just challenge everybody, please go ahead and do this as well, um, because uh, we're going to do a couple of steps real quick here, um, which we'll cover more in detail in a minute. But uh, even if it's just on your phone, on your notepad, or um, if you do have a pen and paper, great. Or if you just have a computer with a Google Doc open, go ahead and uh, I want to just encourage everybody to, uh, to go ahead and play along with us. So um, Ben, do you have the Doc open? Yep. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and put uh, two minutes on the clock here. I'll start my clock here. And we are just going to basically the, the idea is that we're just going to free write, right? There's no 
no holds barred. We're just going to write as much as we can and not think about it too much. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And when I'm, before I actually start the timer, I'm going to share the screen with the Google, Google Docs so you guys can actually see it. Theoretically, everybody should be able to see this now. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Cool. That's pretty and cool. The technology is amazing. The technology, man, right? <laughs> um, okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, let's get started here. So, okay. Set timer for two minutes. Here we go, guys. Cool. All right, that's it. All right. Nice. Okay. Should I read yours first? Yeah, Since, absolutely. Yeah. Do you, So okay. you're going to read mine and I'm going to read yours? Yeah. Okay. Can everybody see the screen? I just want to make sure that everyone I can, can see this. My words closer to yours. Yes, please. Yeah, move your can, words closer. Looks like they can see it in the YouTube over here. Yeah. Is this, is this getting bigger when I do that too? Uh, yeah, I think so. Perfect. So everybody should be able to see that. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Another satisfaction without looking behind me to get another scene. The painter leaves his brushes at the sink and waits for the paint to thin out. Another day, another love, another weird freaky feeling of dealing with this feeling. Sandpaper, trout, and haberdashery. Such cool words that sound old and sick like a pair of old shoes that haven't seen outside the box in too long. When I think of my grandfather, I remember the smell of tobacco smoke from his pipe, the way that he could fall asleep anywhere. Vietnam, he explained, for his ability to sleep anywhere, anytime. My grandmother would get mad when he went behind the shed and came back smelling. <laughs> I love, that's such a cool way to end that sentence. Get beh went behind the shed and came back smelling. I went behind the shed and came back smelling. It's such a mystery there. And I, it, it's very nice how how your thought train went to somewhere so so personal and so sensory. Uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. In, in all of my experience with free writing, it's kind of like you start off with just nonsense at first mm -hmm. and then you kind of find a vein and you just try to, you don't even necessarily have to try to stay in it. But it's like once, you know, maybe we were a minute into that, you kind of have this feeling of like, oh, this is something that I've never talked about that I'd love to talk about. Like mm -hmm. I've never written about my grandfather's smelling like cigar or his uh, pipe smoke before, but it's it's one of the biggest things that I remember about him, you know? And it, it's important, I think, for people to note that like that beginning minute where you were just writing whatever, it was like important that you were 
perfectly content to write for the full two minutes just like about whatever, just like nonsense, in order for it to even be possible for something meaningful to come out. I, it, it, at least that's been my perspective on it. So you have to be willing for it to all be like just meaningless in order for there to be room for you to get to that very like personal open place. Yeah, I had no idea that that's what I was going to write about. We just have a couple of questions in the comments. People are asking sure. whether they should share their ideas in the class. Um, I, I would love to get you to weigh in on that, Ben. But real quick before I do, other people said I just wrote random words and random sentences. I didn't write it in a paragraph. That's totally fine. Like right. start off, we've been you know doing this for years, this kind of like free writing. And it's just like the fact that mine kind of morphed into a story in this section is just because I've been really exercising that part of my mind for a long time. So it's, mm -hmm. it's does not, don't worry if it comes out as, uh, you know, random words or random sentences, that's totally fine. I have free rights like that all the time. Yeah. And, and also like random words and nonsense sometimes is like the most enjoyable to put down. And like, I would challenge you to consider like, the value of doing this you know regardless of what the text ends up being just like how it feels to just be like i mean it's only two minutes but i just i i find it to be like it it's a similar feeling to uh laughing yeah that was really fun disarming and freeing yeah all right shall i shall i read yours ben yeah Timer 2, sequel blue, hawk fleshing down on the apron king. Cooking pasta in the steam, milky bubbles caused disease, putrid noodles in the breeze. Felt flipping flustered, young, young tongue, lung, dung, dumb, dump, dumb, plum, is like a, a language class, is a yeah. prune, <laughs> one whole plum becomes po, it's fast and sulfur, filled not as sweet, but faster still. We're missing the juice. We are wishing for loops that are dry and bowl filled with toucan Sam getting killed day in and day out advertising for the Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love toucan Sam getting killed. He's like, I just have this image of like toucan Sam backstage, like waiting for, for him to get into another commercial. He's like, 40 years yeah. I've been doing this. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> Fellow knows. Yeah. <laughs> we have to overdub his vocals. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He sounds like uh, Gilbert Gottfried. So, um, yeah. <laughs> shall we? Uh, I think what we had planned on doing, Ben, and you can let me know if this is interesting to you. Mm -hmm. Should we um, maybe go through each other's stuff and maybe highlight what seems interesting to us? Totally. And then yeah. maybe use that as like a starting line for another. Right. Because what, what, what you notice is when you do this, you find little glimmers, little bright lights in there of like, oh, I, for some reason, those words feel nice right now. And, and yeah, and so if we go through and highlight all of those and then use those as the starting point for another writing round, I think that's great. So I like to do, you know, two or three of these two minute rounds uh, and kind of iterate on whatever happened before. And you don't have to be, feel like you're stuck to it because once again, the these ideas, whatever we end up highlighting, they're not like our new Lord that we have to listen to all the, the rules. It's like just th maybe they'll help you think of other things. Um, so yeah, I think... I'll just quickly like go through yours and bold what I liked and you want to go through mine and bold what you liked? Yeah, absolutely. Mine. And then maybe rather than going for another round of writing, mm -hmm. maybe we'll just tell people what they would do cool. um, so that they can practice on their own. That's great. And then we can uh, get into knowing when songs are done. Okay, cool. Nice. Good thinking. <laughs> Okay, great. So, 
All right. Of mine, you liked what? I liked well what 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 glowed to me, what was like shiniest was Waits for the Paint, Freaky Feeling of Dealing. Uh I think Waits for the Paint just it just kind of tickled me the way it, it it just felt nice and then Freaky Feeling of Dealing, it's like you could imagine that being an internal rhyme somewhere in a yeah. larger line. Haven't seen outside the box, just freaking relatable. <laughs> uh <laughs> Vietnam, he explained, that's like the beginning to so much. Like you could have that be a refrain, like an explanation for all kinds of stuff. A whole bunch of story could become like the refrain could be Vietnam, he explained. And yeah. Um, and then went behind the shed and came back smelling. It's like, what's behind that shed? What are you smelling? What do you smell like? You know, there's a lot of mystery there. The curiosity. Yeah. And of yours, I really like the two sequel blue. Um, Mm -hmm. It just seems like it's, there's a lot of texture to that line. Mm -hmm. Like it's a very, there's a lot of imagery in that. Like, I know you didn't write the word sequins, but I kind of almost Mm -hmm. imagined like this almost like kind of blue sequined suit or something like that. Um, But who knows, maybe like on the second time that you wrote through this, uh, you might write about something that kind of goes along those lines. You ne- you never yeah. know where this is going to go. Um, flustered, young, and young. I just like that you respelled young slightly differently. Like I like uh, what do they call them? Homophones. Uh, yeah. Two words that are spelled else, differently but sound the same. There's something else called hominids, and I don't remember what's what. But I think one has to do with biology. Hominids. If if <laughs> I don't know either. If you guys know what hominids is, go ahead and put it in the chat. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure not as is. sweet, but faster still. I just love that line. It just feels so punk to me. Not as sweet, but faster <laughs> still. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Just, da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, it just feels so pop punk to me. I love it. And then Toucan Sam <laughs> getting killed day in and day out advertising. For the Kellogg's. The I, I like that it's the <laughs> Kellogg's. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's advertising for the Kellogg's. Yeah, um, that's right. Somebody asked who Toucan Sam is. That's a good uh, question. If, if you don't know who Toucan Sam is, he was the he was the uh, cartoon bird that advertised for, what was it? Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah like Fruit Loops is like s- little circles that are different colors that you eat in cereal, but they're supposed to, they're like supposed to be like fruit, but they, they all taste the same regardless of the <laughs> color, I think, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a, a little bit of a letdown. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a mess. It, are you, is this interesting to you guys? Are you guys finding that this is helpful? Like you can see how, like we didn't really get too attached to any one thing. We just kind of went straight through it. Um, Lots this of people is definitely, are saying it's good. Yeah, this is definitely where um, lyrics can come from that don't sound random at all. Like, this isn't just the process of writing lyrics to get, like, this sort of surrealist stream of thought thing. This is a process that could lead you to, as, as you could see in Matthews, was a very, like, specific, real-life, kind of grounded story can come from it, too, so... I love it. It's fun. It's just a great activity. And yeah, like after two to three rounds, you start to see maybe a story, maybe like some of the imagery is connected. You start to say like, what am I, this is what I'm thinking about. I didn't even know I was thinking about this, but now that I think about it a little more, the reason these things flash out to me, the reason like haven't seen outside the box is shiny to me is because I haven't gone outside in four days. You know, like there's all these things. (laughs) And often it's the small things, the little details that pop out the most and are the most poetic. So something very specific like Grandpa's Shoes or um, Toucan Sam, you know, like Toucan Sam's not like an important figure. That's why, you know, people didn't know who he is. It's not not like something that, oh, you got to know about Toucan Sam. He has such a big role in your life. But no, but it's like still specific and relevant. Uh, and people are saying hominids are the kind of primate that we are. We're part of that primate good. family of the hominids. Very cool. And homonyms is probably what you were saying, uh, which are like synonyms and antonyms. So okay, look, Thank we're you very all much. we're all learning some stuff today. I, Thank you guys. I love it. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, basically, anytime you have a question, there's like 
There's computer <laughs> software engineers. There's historians. There's people who uh, live all over the world. You can get you can get it all over. We here. have very diverse live streams. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I always like to point out that, like, I know that this sounds like kind of it, it can sound kind of like hippy dippy or whatever, but like there are like some really really um, great um, performers and acts and bands and. Um, you know, songwriters that have used this, I always like to use the example of like Nirvana um, and the Talking Heads. Talking Heads would literally write down a bunch of phrases that sounded interesting to them, put it into a bowl, and they would literally just fish it out. And that was the first lyric. And then they would pull out another one. That was the second lyric. Um, Nirvana in bloom, sell the kids for food. Huh. Kurt Cobain just wrote that in a notebook. And he was like, that's pretty cool. I think that's interesting. And it became like this insanely cool starting line for a very well-known song and, and uh, radiohead does it as well or has done it oh yeah Fantastic. absolutely yeah i do it all the time and uh so i love it yeah so um right this is a good slide define when you're done because we got to talk about finishing songs because that's you know starting songs is really hard for some people lyrics is really hard for some people sometimes everything's hard for people i mean that's totally acceptable too and finishing songs is definitely hard how many of you have a bunch of things you've started but they're not finished and it's become stressful because they just pile up well one thing with creativity and art stuff is often you have to be very specific about what you mean by done because uh, technically, you could just keep coming back to a song and changing it forever, and there'd be no objective way to know it's done. So I say it's done when it's possible to show the song to someone in some way. So you can play it for them, or you could show them a recording, you could make a video of it. Ideally, you would maybe even make it possible that they could listen to or watch it whenever they want. So it's not just um, re reliant on you to show it to people, but like it's kind of out in the world in some way. That's not as important as just it's in a format where people can experience it. Um, and so when the song is saved in a way that you won't forget it in a few years, that's another really important part of this because like it, it doesn't like the song being done but in a way where like you'll forget it it that means really it's just in your head and our heads kind of they're not very reliable um for storing information over long periods of time and also like like what happens to me a lot of time is i'll write a song and i'll be like this song is great then a few years later i'll be like this song is bad and then a few <laughs> years later i'll be like no that song is great like yeah. it'll just be how I feel about me. You know, it's a lot of my, my personal relationship with my past self. Am I more empathetic towards myself from the past or am I angry at myself? And it's funny because over time you start to, ideally, if things are going well, you forgive your old mistakes more and more as you become more empathetic towards others. And then you're happy to hear your naive music about whatever you were interested in back 10 years ago, you know, yeah. and like... So you got to keep it somewhere where you can hear it again. And just on a very practical level, some people are saying some of Leonard Cohen's songs took 10 years to write. And that's why you always want to be writing. Like you always want to have more stuff that you're working on because one of, I mean, I don't want to place a judgment on it, but one of the hardest things and a place where I see a lot of students get stuck is when they have that one precious song that they're like, mm -hmm. man, I went through this. And this song is about this experience and that song needs to include everything about that. But when you get so precious and fixated on that one song, it will take you a really, really long time because you will get yeah. stuck as soon as something doesn't jive with your original vision or idea. And what I think is so cool about songwriters like Leonard Cohen, Paul Simon, uh, Bob Dylan, these guys, like they write a lot of material and they always have stuff that they're polishing, but also new stuff that they're working on too. So yeah. I found that it's really important to have a balance. Yeah, if you've seen the musical Rent, well, it doesn't matter if you've seen it or not, but there's a character in it who is just writing one great song. That's all they want to do is just write one, one song, great glory. glory. Yeah, just <laughs> the, the ultimate song to sum up so much. And of course he's stuck. And, and you know, like just trying to write one perfect song it's sort of like well what how many really nice songs are you missing just because you're not trying to start other ones and so yeah um writer's block is a big thing that comes up towards the end of the process uh and 
what I recommend doing is creating deadlines for yourself, but no one likes deadlines. So I like calling them get a, get a, getting on with your lifelines. Cause really like the deadline is actually very helpful. Like it, the deadline is like an acknowledgement that life is finite and that you benefit from uh, being able to move on and not be stuck in any one position. Like the ability to move on and keep growing is I think very important for happiness, like, or whatever that means, you know, just like f feeling like the th things that are happening around you are evolving or growing in some way. Um, so it's hard to have a deadline with creative stuff because nobody's going to like twist your arm and be like, Hey, you need to finish that song. Like, unless you're doing it for a living, but that's, you know, really rare. And like, also even most people need a lot of help. Yeah. Um, so creating a deadline for yourself, like I'm going to tell my friend, let's have a listening party on this specific date. And that's when I'm going to play my song for this one friend, or like, let's say your family or a group of friends, or you have a writing buddy and it's like, all right, we're going to each write a song in blank amount of time. And then we're going to show each other on this day. That's we're going to show, I'll show you my song. You show me your song and we'll give each other encouragement and feedback. And maybe we'll write a song together. Who knows? And, yeah. and so creating these deadlines for yourself by, you know, not just having the song be for you, but, having it be for like shared with someone else um, can help you like get to that finish line. Yeah. Like a live stream where you play the song. That's a fun one. Or yeah. Uh, oh, it's, it's perfect. Look at these slides. It's like exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I try I try to get you buddy. Um, you got it. <laughs> now I, I like a couple of these other additional, I, I don't want to call them rules, but just guidelines um, that you said, um, one thing we were talking about this earlier, Ben and I, and um, one of the things that I thought was really cool about what he said, and it's just true, is that you're always writing songs, even when you're not actively sitting down and doing it. Um, ben, you want to talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Because if you try to define which things about my life are relevant to my songwriting, I can't think of anything that isn't. Everything that goes into how you feel how you think about yourself, how you think about the world, how you think about others, how you think about creativity, um, how much time you have in, in the day, your schedule, your like the shape of your days, um, how comfortable you are, how uncomfortable you are. All this stuff feeds into your songs. So there are no wasted experiences in the process of songwriting. Like it's a, such a bummer when you cut out all of the stuff that is influencing your songs in favor of some narrow idea of what you're supposed to be as a songwriter. And what happens is like, if you're really uh, interested in writing songs, you might think, oh, but I have barely any time to write songs. Therefore, I'm pissed off because like, uh, I'll never be able to write good songs because I only have like, let's say, 20 minutes in the day where I could even sit down with an instrument and start writing songs. Well, I, I would say actually the entire day goes into that 20 minutes. Everything that happened that day is relevant to what happens in those 20 minutes. And so instead it's like, how do I make these 20 minutes just jump straight to the point? How do I get it to the core as fast as possible? And that's what this reactive writing, this warming up with writing nonsense lyrics, that's how you get it in. And, yeah, like cramming doesn't work for studying for like objective facts and retaining facts, but it can be helpful in creative situations. Like having limited time and being like, I got 20 minutes to get this song done. Well, actually, you've got all the time leading up to that 20 minutes to have ideas percolate. And those 20 minutes, that's actually plenty of time to get the song out if you're not mired in self-doubt and like feeling this sense that the song should be perfect in some way and trying to define perfect like no 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 you can get the song done in five minutes if you've been if you've been like training your mind to be creative in every little 20 minute session you've got and throughout the day um and yeah and try not to focus on what the song isn't or what's missing or what could have been when you're thinking about songs when you're thinking about lyrics try to say instead, what is this? What is this saying? Like when I play the sloppy beat, 
that is not objectively anything, right? It's what is like, it makes you feel chaotic and all over the place. And so that's a color. That's a legitimate color. Maybe it's not the color you want all the time because it's a very intense color. Uh, if you made a whole painting of that, it would be actually a perfectly acceptable genre, which is like noise music. That is a, you know, that's a whole world. It's not like, it's not like this is not, this, this is not extreme for everyone, you know? And, right. and it's like, you want to tap into how you feel about it and, and go with that, you know? Uh, be sensitive to how you're reacting to the sounds and try not to objectify them. Absolutely. And Ben, I'm just looking at the clock, so I just wanted to point this out to everybody. Ben has an absolutely amazing, um, I almost said singing course, songwriting course um, called Getting Songs Done. And it, it comes with this nice desk and little plant and coffee <laughs> mug. And I'm just kidding. Um, but it is an amazing online course. I went ahead and put it in the chat so that everybody can um, click on that link and get enrolled. Um, ben typically offers this to his subscribers, but he was kind enough to open up to everybody um, because he wants everybody to improve and get their songs done. So go ahead and check that out. That's in the description and in the, the chat right now. But uh, then we've just got a couple minutes left. Shall we maybe look at a song and yeah. see if there's like something that we can do? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, All right. There's always, there's always something to do. Yeah. There's always something to do. Okay, yeah. great. So what I'm going to do is let me think about this. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Is this interesting to everybody? Is everybody having a good time? This is like helpful, exciting. You guys like content like this. I just want to make absolutely sure. Don't want to hold anybody against their will. Okay, people are saying it's helpful, so that's, a, that's good. Um, here's one from Dominic Washburn. Uh, it's got a video, and we've got some lyrics here. It's called Very This cool. Ain't Fun Anymore. Oh. And so I was thinking maybe... Let's watch this. Mm -hmm. Can everyone hear this? I hear it personally. Can everyone hear that? I think. Can you hear it, Ben? I, guess I hear important. it. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yes. Okay, cool. People are saying yes. So I'll play cool. it from the beginning. Here we go. Thanks. I get it. Let's go with that so nice. far. So we've got a, cool. a pretty standard one four five progression in the key of A. Mm -hmm. And let me go ahead and pull up his uh, lyrics as well. That way we can look cool. at those too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. right away, there's some really good teachable moments in there. Like, uh, you'll notice the verse and the chorus are very different from each other. The verse mm -hmm. is low in his voice and kind of sparse with a phrase, a phrase, a phrase. And then when it's time for the chorus, it's holding on to just the sound of oh, oh, oh in a higher range in their voice there. And so you get this great, uh, very, it's a simple thing that is so effective is to make your verses and your choruses very different from each other. So if you have a really busy verse, a really sparse chorus, a really sparse verse, a really busy chorus, Make, making the, you know, the low end lower, the high end higher, you know, just any way you can create that contrast. Let's see, yeah, those lyrics there. So uh, what Dominic said was that I, I had people write in what, they're, what issues they're having, how they're getting mm -hmm. stuck. So, so I'm having a problem with skating the fine line between tongue in cheek and just plain bitter while still making it relatable. Basically, I want to nice. reflect that feeling that you get when you realize you're trapped in a relationship and you can leave if it's toxic or not fruitful, but not bitter at all. LOL. <laughs> there was a yeah. version with a melodic first chorus, but I felt spoken word made it more interesting. Matt, I promise I could still hit those high notes. Way to go, Dominic. I'm proud of you, buddy. <laughs> well, he knows, that is he a, knows I'm watching. 
Yeah, that is a really, really great question. Like that question shows a lot of wisdom because how do you not sound bitter when you're t talking about this subject matter? And I feel like so much of how to sound not bitter comes from the music. So like words, words over music have a very much more objective mu meaning without the music, like, like just words, period, have a much more objective, like if I say the red dog, like sure, you might think of Clifford or you might think of, well, you'll probably, you'll probably think of Clifford given that we're, we're from a culture that had Clifford the big red dog <laughs> when we we're growing up, but like, of course. Cliff. But, like it's so objective though that I'm talking about a dog, you know, that color and that's it. But if I say the red dog and I pair it with this chord and I sing it like the red dog, the red dog, the red. Suddenly it's like, whoa, what the heck is up with this red dog? Like that is freaking spooky. Like what does it mean? What does that mean? The red dog. And so it changes everything about it. And the quote I like, it's like a Yip Harbor quote, is music makes people feel feelings. Words make people think thoughts. Songs make people feel thoughts. Ha, ah, I like that. Yeah. So like if you want people to not feel bitter, it, I think a lot comes from the not the, what words you put in, but it's the melody and the chords and the rhythm and the way all the sub lyrical elements interplay with it so if you want to say something like that sounds really bitter in just plain english like 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 you're playing games you're are you're full of, you're full of crap like that is so bitter right this is, that's way more bitter than anything you've written there you know like you're full of crap like if i take something like that and i'm like like you're full like you're full crap. now it sounds a bit humorous because of the weird juxtaposition so it it's very hard to believe that you're truly bitter because you're make, kind of making fun of yourself by that juxtaposition. Juxtaposition. Whereas if I go, like, 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 you're full of crap. You're full of crap. You're full Whoa. of crap. You're full of crap. You're full of crap. Like that sounds much more bitter because I'm it's turning more on the that nose. right on the nose. Yeah. So. Obviously, You're Full of Crap is an incredibly hard lyric to recolor because it's so freaking direct. But what you've got, I get it. You're into games, but babe, that ain't my thing. Like, I think one thing that could, like, soften it up is if there's some maybe little question, you know, now that we've talked about the musical thing. One thing lyrically that could soften it up, though, is if there's some questioning of whether or not you aren't. If you're really, am I really not into games, though? If you start questioning yourself, then it softens it because it's like, not like you're definitely wrong, I'm definitely right, but like, eh, I'm pretty much right, or am I? You know, so it like, <laughs> like if it's, I get it, you're into games, but babe, that ain't my thing, or it wasn't my thing, or, and then the chorus, you know, something that, it doesn't have to literally be those words, like so, but like something that questions whether or not maybe this is my thing, or maybe it's not your thing, you yeah. know? And it doesn't have to happen in that verse either. It can happen later. You know, the, the, the mood evolves over time. But the first thing I try to do is, is approach it musically and say, is the, how is the music coloring these words? Yeah, I can't think of a better example. Did you ever, do you know the, the Eels song, It's a Mother Effer? No. It's like, it's a motherfucker getting through a Sunday. <laughs> it's just like, That's it's that. really, it's really beautiful, but it's like Very relatable. Yeah. 
but it's like the 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 words and the the chords are just so juxtaposed that it's just like wow like you you can tell this guy's really feeling that um guys we have to wrap up i want to be really really respectful of ben's time and your all's mm. time i'm so glad um that you guys were able to make it um if you want more amazing um advice on songwriting more help if you need to get unstuck, um, definitely check out Ben Levin's course. Um, I went ahead and put that in the chat. I'll go ahead and put it in the chat one more time. Um, ben, is there anything uh, else that you want to wrap up on? I just want to say to everyone just once again that uh, I really think songwriting and just creativity, it's something that blooms in you and the process of exploring it and and having that exploration feel more like a walk through nature rather than like a problem to solve, um, th that that is a very enriching thing. And it can, it can, it, it, it won't fix any of your problems to engage in this artistic process. It won't fix any of them, but it can give you tremendous insight into them. And I find it to be very helpful to me uh, and to a lot of people that I know to to work on the process of music making, the process of singing, the process of painting, drawing, writing, all this stuff without necessarily having it be all about arriving somewhere with some finished work. Uh, of course, we're talking about finishing songs because everybody likes to and it's nice. It's expressive to be able to share. But the most important thing is just, I think, just sitting down and messing around and trying and listening and and experiencing then after that practicing and then after that finishing and like developing and editing and but the core of this is just to let it be kind of a stream that you kind of hang out in and you explore and like what's under this rock oh there's a frog you know what's around like that, that bend exactly <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome ben thank you so much for doing this uh lots of people are already thank saying you, that they're feeling unstuck um, they're already feeling really, really good. They've got lots of ideas. So I can That's just, wonderful. just from the chat, I can tell that this has already been super helpful for people. Again, awesome. uh, check out Ben's amazing course, Getting Songs Done. Uh, if you're on my email list, you'll uh, get a link to check that out uh, in just like another hour or so. So definitely keep a lookout for that. Um, thank you so much for being here, Ben. It was really, thank really you. awesome. Thank I... you. I really appreciate it. It's I love live streaming. It it's just become such a thing I love to do. It's so fun, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye it, it, everybody. It, it, <laughs> bye. Thank you.